throne of grace this morning. Oh, Father God, we come this afternoon, oh God, just to say thank you, oh God. Thank you for allowing us, oh God, to come once again, oh God, to your place of worship, oh God. Oh God, we ask that you continue to be in this place, oh God, as we prepare to go further and further in you, oh God. We thank you right now, oh God, for all that you have done in our lives and the things that you are yet to do thus far. Oh God, we give your name all the glory and the honor, and we give your name all the praise that is truly given unto you. Oh God, we ask that you remove me this day, oh God, and let the people hear a word, oh God, from you. Oh God, we magnify, we glorify, we praise your name. It is in Jesus' most powerful name we pray. Let the church say amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. 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 Truly a pleasure and honor once again to be in the house of the Lord. An opportune time to be able to give God all the honor and all the praise yeah. given to his name. Amen. amen. Y'all don't seem excited this afternoon. You uh -huh. seem like you want to be back home watching the football. Uh -huh. But that's all right. So we still want to have church. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. This is our football arena right now. This is where we can give God all the glory and all the praise given to his name. If you'll be at home right now, you'll be calling out your team's yeah. favorite name right now. Wishing that they win this afternoon. Yeah. But God said give me some glory this yeah. afternoon. Yeah. This place. Because I deserve all the glory and all the honor and all the praise given to my name. Because I didn't have to wake you up this morning. God didn't have to start you on your way. But God allowed you this morning. This opportunity to give it all the praise and worship given unto his name. So let's just give God a, a hand clap of praise yeah. this afternoon. And let God know how much he needs to honor. Not that we're going to give him a hand praise, but we're going to give him all the praise, all the honor yeah. to give unto his name. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We just had to get that out of the way. Yeah. Give God some praise this afternoon. Amen. Yeah. He's worthy. Amen. He sure is. Yeah. God is worthy of all the praise. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We learned this afternoon from the scripture, which is already read from Matthew, that fifth chapter and eighth verse, that we have to be pure at heart if we want to be a part of God's kingdom. Amen. Amen. He didn't say that we can come to him any kind of way or we can do whatever we want to do. But he says that we have to be pure in heart. And once we become pure in heart, we'll be able to see God and be able to be used by God to do what God has set forth for us to do. Amen. 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 Amen, Mike. Amen. Amen. God wants us to be pure. And that's what He requires of each and every one of us under the sound of my voice. Yes. The word pure from the Webster Dictionary is defined as uncertain, affinity, clean, literally or figuratively. Clean, clear, and pure. Jesus declared to the people that the day that if someone was capable of having, keeping, or even obtaining a pure heart, that they will someday see God. Yeah. We all desire this. We all want to see God and bask in the glory that God has given to us all. Yeah. But in order for us to receive that, we must first be pure in heart yeah. and be willing to follow, to follow what the Master has set in place for us to endure and to go through. Yeah. It is the desire of every believer that one day they will see God and be able to enjoy God. Be able to just like I said from the beginning, vast in what God has in store for them. But however, we have someone out there that tries to distract us. That tries to keep us away from seeing God's glory. The enemy has a desire to keep us from seeing what God has yet in store for us. Both this and in this world, in the next world, the devil is still trying to take what God has set in place for each and every one of us under the sign of our course. But this day we say we're not going to give the devil the glory, but we're going to give God all the glory because God is continuing to work in each and every one of us under the sound of my voice. God said that he's going to continue to do a new work in each and every one of us. But we have to be able to receive and listen to what thus says the Lord. His attempt to cause us to be pure at heart and be able to enjoy the things in which he has set forth for us to enjoy. One thing that I have found to be universal among us all is that we want to be pure at heart. We want to live right. We want to believe in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But we have these challenges. We have these things on a daily basis that we have to face and deal with before we can really give God all the glory, that pure heart that he wants us to give to him. We all can recall when we first came to the church, 
How will the soul sold out for God in all God's glory? Yeah. We were the first person that came to church and the last one to leave. Uh -huh. But as time started to go on our, our faith, our tests, our challenges, our struggles determine how often we come to church on, and how often we want to give God all the glory this yeah. afternoon. Yeah. But God said no matter how we go praise him, he's still going to do what he said yeah. he's going to do in our life. But God said all you have to do is to continue to have a pure heart and I will continue to do the rest. Uh -huh. Continue to have that love, unconditional love for your brothers and sisters. Yeah. Continue to have that pure heart. Their hearts are pure. Their motives are pure. Yeah. Their intentions are pure. Yeah. They are simply thankful to be saved and are happy and content to be a part of God's family. Uh -huh. Those of us who claim to be Christian, that's all that we want to do. That's all we want to say. We want others to know that we have a pure heart. That our motives have always been abounded in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And in everything that we do, that our intentions are going to be pure. Even though we sometimes don't want to do things in which God asks us to do, God said that He's still going to be faithful and just in all that He said that He's going to do for us. Amen. No matter how we disrespect or dishonor God, God still honors us. And he still loves us unconditionally. But God says we still have to have a pure heart to be a part of his world, his kingdom, to be a part of the kingdom business. People say that the church is where I want to be revived or where I, I feel the presence of the Lord or that I seek the presence of the Lord. But the Lord our God said he's always with us everywhere that we go. He's there with us when we go to and fro from the east coast to the west coast to the north, to the south, our God, our God is always with us. Amen. But it's important that we do our part and carry that pure heart wherever we go. The heart that loves God for all that God is doing. The heart that loves God for all that he has saved us from. The heart that loves God no matter what situation we are in life. Mm -hmm. God still loves us. Yes. And we still must have that pure heart. Pure heart. They tell us time and time again that our family and our friends, we try to encourage them and let them know how our God is so awesome, how our God is so worthy, how our God deserves all the praise and honor given unto his name. But God says, when you do that, give it a pure heart, give my pure heart that I have instilled in you, and let them know who you serve and who you are serving. Don't be afraid and don't be ashamed to declare that you love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Be able to tell others how much God has done in your life. Amen. Not to brag, not to boast, but to have that pure heart to be able to tell others how much you love the Lord. And let them see that light that dwells within. What makes us as Christians so important in this life? It makes us important because we are God's children. We are the King's kids. We are part of his kingdom, ready to do what he has instructed us to do. But God said once again, a pure heart is needed to be a part of this kingdom. What makes these people outside of the kingdom more important than those who are part of the kingdom? God said those who are a part of the kingdom have that pure heart. And those who are not a part of my kingdom continue to live in their foolish ways. What makes these people so valuable to grow, makes us so valuable to grow in the church is, us as Christians is to have that pure heart. A heart that is pure and capable of loving someone who is unlovable. Mm -hmm. Someone who disrespects you, doesn't receive you, doesn't like your skin, your color, your eyes, or whatever they see fit that they find fault to you. Mm -hmm. To have that pure heart means to be able to love them yes. and to love them unconditionally. Yes. No matter what sin they may be doing or partaking in, to be able to have a pure heart and continue to love a heart that is pure is able to look beyond a person's faults and see their potential greatness in God. Yeah. Yes, many times we see people do the wrong thing, we continue to put them down. But God said it's not for us to judge them, mm -hmm. but it's for us to have that pure heart to be able to encourage them, yeah. to love on them even the more, yeah. to take the time to witness to them and encourage them on how great our God is and how God can take them out of whatever sin that they're partaking in. Yeah. But they too have to give their life, they have to give their heart, their mind, their body, and soul unto God. Yeah. Amen. A heart that's pure is a heart that has no selfish motives. 
It's only it wants to bless God and bless those who are around him. We all want a heart like this. Well, some of us do, and some of us don't. But God wants us all to have a heart, a pure heart, loyal unto him, loving unto others, but faithful ever the more to him. They labor for the Lord because they love the Lord. A heart that labors for the Lord loves the Lord with all their heart and leads not to their own understanding. And the people who they surround themselves are people who are abiding in the word, abiding in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and doing Christ-like things. Not continue to follow those folks that are continuing to, to do the things of this world, following in their sinful ways. But being able to be an encouragement for others to see that one day I was back there doing those sinful things. But today and forevermore I live for my Lord and Savior, yeah. Jesus Christ. Amen. This person we may see is, is not perfect. Mm -hmm. Just like you and I are not perfect. Mm -hmm. The only perfect living human being that ever walked the face of this earth was our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes. We have to understand that our neighbor is sitting to the left and to the right of us, that they are still human beings. That they are flesh. That they are not going to be perfect. That they're going to make some mistakes in this lifetime that we may not understand, but God knows. And God knows best. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have to take account that we can't be that judge and executioner for those people that we love in our lives and those people that we come in contact with on a daily basis. God wants us to love them no matter what. No matter what, no matter what to be able to reach out to them, talk to them, love on them, and show them that Christian way which God has instilled inside of you. Even though they may make mistakes, they still may fall short. But Jesus said that because their motives were correct and their heart was pure, mm -hmm. that they shall see God. Yeah. Yes, we may see someone doing the wrong thing. And we may think they're not faithfully serving God. But we cannot too bring that same judgment upon them and look upon them as being something that God is not pleased with. Because God is always pleased with us no matter the situation we put ourselves in. As long as we repent, ask God for forgiveness, God will let us still allow, be able to be allowed in this kingdom. Yes. But we have to be able to, first of all, repent. Mm -hmm. Get rid of those things that are causing us to sin. Be able to trust in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and be able to walk with that walk that he has called us to walk. Yeah. Be able to have that pure heart that he has given us all to have. And once we have that pure heart, and let go of those sinful ways, then we shall be able to see what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and what God has in store for us all. Amen. So it seems paramount that a believer in Jesus Christ should seek to have and maintain an adulterated, uncontaminated, clean heart. Jesus said in Matthew 11 and 29, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest for your souls. Jesus' desire for those who would follow his divine example are those who are pure in heart. If we're going to seek God, if we're going to find rest for our souls, we must seek to have labor and to keep our heart clean and pure. That Jesus intends for us all if we plan on following our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But you say, what should be the simple and most easiest and confound thing to do? To follow him, to love him, to have a pure heart, to be able to give our all to him and receive what he has in store for us. But Satan has another plan in store for us as well. Satan says that he wants to try to trip you up. He wants to try to trip the church up. He doesn't want us to see what God has in store for us. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want us to receive those godly blessings that he has in store for us. So Satan tries to tempt us. Yeah. He tries to bring those things into our lives that he knows that are going to tempt us or make us easily succumb to the things that he wants us to do. Yeah. So that we won't be able to receive God's glory. So that we won't be able to receive what God has yet in store for us. So Satan constantly works to cause our hearts to lose their Cause our hearts to be unclean. Cause our hearts to follow the things of this world and stand or stand focused on God. 
Instead of staying focused on what thus says the Lord what God has in store for you. One of the main areas Satan works to try to destroy is our pure heart. And this our pure heart is being put to the test on a daily basis. Because Satan doesn't want us to see what God has in store for us. God says, keep your eyes on me. Keep your faith in me. Keep your heart yet so pure. Keep your heart and your mind pure. God says for us not to judge one another, but to love. Matthew 7 and 1 says, judge not that we be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge? Ye shall be judged, and with what measure ye met. It shall be measured to you again. We also see in Luke that Luke also says the same message. It says not to judge. Luke, the sixth chapter, the 37 verse, it says, Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and yet ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and all shall be forgiven. Amen. I'm going to repeat that one more time. It says, judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. We all make mistakes. We're all not perfect. Mm -hmm. But God says for us that we have to ask for forgiveness. And when we ask for forgiveness, be able to forgive one another. And when someone wrongs us, we have to be able to understand that that person is not perfect. And understand that we too are going to wrong that same person. Maybe not the same way that they did it unto us, but we're going to wrong that person in, a, in the same way or a different way. But at some point, we're going to wrong that person. But for us to be able to not to judge them, not to hold what they did against them, but to be able to forgive and let God continue to do a work in them. A person who has a pure heart does not judge or, or condemn, but they do always forgive others. As Christ has forgiven us. Mm -hmm. They realize that if God is capable of forgiving the, the sinner and the sins in which they have committed, that they too should be able to forgive their sister, their brother, their friend, their lover. Mm -hmm. God says for us to be able to forgive. He didn't say it was going to be easy to forgive, but he said for us to be able to forgive. Yeah. They realize that if God is capable of forgiving, that we are able to forgive as well. Amen. They love the person because Jesus loved them regardless of the fault they may have seen in them or watched them do. Jesus told us in John 7 and 24, judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgments. What is about what is about men that they will seek to find faults of others? It seems to be a universal problem that we all are facing. For people of all and every age is a place of society, regardless of where they live in this world. People want to judge one another. I'm going to say that again because people want to judge one another. We may see our sister or our brother, they may have fallen, they may have not did something righteous and pleasing unto us. And we start to judge. We don't understand because God may have something in place for them to go through and to endure. But God says not to judge once again. Mm -hmm. Not to judge what they're doing. Let God be the judge in the execution. People want to judge one another time and time again. They want to prove that their own righteousness is better than the righteousness of their neighbor. But like I said from the beginning, we're not perfect. We make mistakes. Only perfect person in this lifetime was our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. A common thread of Jesus' teaching is the sacrifice of love people. Regardless of where they are in their walk with him. John 15 and 12 says, This is my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you. John 13 and 35 also says, But this shall all men know that you are my disciples if ye have love one to another. What does it mean to have love one to another? Paul best sums it up in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Paul describes for us the work of love. He describes charity. Charity as it is used here in the original Greek context was agape. 
Agape means brother love, brotherly love, affection, goodwill, or benevolence. In chapter 13, Paul lets us know that no matter how great your faith is, and no matter how much you do for the kingdom of God, if you don't have love for God's people, you have nothing. And you are nothing. Because God's people is what God has entrusted each and every one of us under the side of our voice. God has entrusted us with our kids, our spouse, our family members, our mothers, our fathers, those we interact on a daily basis. God has instructed us all to love them and love them unconditionally. There is much to be gleaned from 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter and the 5th verse, however. But it says charity. Think of no evil. And in verse 7 it says, let us know that love believes all things. Hope all things. And by the way, we will never be a help to those around us until our hearts are pure. And we can demonstrate that perfect love one for another. We will not think evil of them when the opportunity does arise. And when we believe in them and hope in them, regardless of what is happening in their lives at the current moment, but that we trust and believe that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is still doing a work in them. When a child of God considers another person, they should do so in light of 1 Corinthians 13. They should ask themselves, am I thinking evil of this person? Do I believe in this person? Am I hoping the best for this person? Let us all face these questions in life. And know when we think on these questions, that none of us are perfect. None of us are without sin. None of us are without sin in this lifetime. Because we all sin. We all have sin and come short of the glory of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For some of us, it may be lying. For some of us, it may be stealing. For some of us, it may be alcoholism and drugs. For some of us, it may be fornication. For some of us, it may be anger. For some of us, it may be that pride that dwells on the inside. For some of us, it may be that bitterness over our injured past or the things that we had to go through in this life. For some of us, it may be Whatever you want to fill in the blame. But the fact of the matter is, no in this congregation here today, or no one on earth, is without sin. Each of us has a sin problem and some kind of problem that we are enduring or going through. But if we have that pure heart and believe that yes, we may be doing that sin, but I'm going to give that sin to God and just let it in. And let God take that sin away. You don't even have to do something evil to sin. Think on that for a second. You don't have to do anything evil to sin. All you have to do is just think it. Many times we realize that we say that other people sin so much and they do so many things not pleasing unto God. But sometimes the things that we think and the things that we do are committing that same sin. We're doing that same sin that that person may be doing as well. Because a sin is a sin. And we all sin and we all are not perfect. They are all displeasing to God and they all separate us from this true holiness. This, however, was the purpose of the cross and Jesus died on Calvary. This was why Jesus hung and died a horrific death on the cross. Thank God we have had a mediator before God and thank God we have been forgiven for our sins, our past, present, and our future sins that we are going to do. So why do we judge each other instead of having that pure heart in which God has instructed us to have? Why do we look for all, why do we look for and call out the worst in us? Why do we look to notice and point out what others are doing and what they're not doing right or wrong? But we can't express to God what we are doing wrong in our own lives. What is keeping us from looking beyond the immediate fall to see the positive work of God in someone else's life? Why were there so much good 
that the Holy Spirit is doing in our lives that we can't be a blessing to someone else and let them know how good our God is and how they too can receive what God has in store for them. But instead we only notice one or two obvious things that is not perfect yet in our lives. But God said we all are not perfect and we all need to seek to have a pure heart. Why is it easy to see the faults in other men and women and those who confess that they are Christians? Why is it so easy for us to see their faults but we can't recognize our own? God said we, we, you, I, me, must have that pure heart. There is only one reason our hearts are not pure. If our hearts were pure, love would cause compassion to dwell upon our hearts. For the person that we are to be and be able to demonstrate our faith and encourage our sisters and brothers. If our hearts were so pure, we'd be able to look past their faults and know that our Lord and Savior is still working on Like Steve Harvey always said, God is still working on them. But sometimes we get to the point and use that excuse time and time again. When God said, I've been working on you, I'm going to still be working on you. But you have to have that pure heart for me to be able to continue to do a work in you. Is it better to have a pure heart than it is to be without sin? The scripture shared earlier in this study that we're talking about today in the book of Matthew, the fifth chapter. Let us know that a person with a pure heart will see God. How many out here today want to see God? How many out here want to enjoy the goodness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? How many you know that we can't examine each other, but let God do that examination? That we can't make everything happen. That we have to have that faith in our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ. We already know that there is forgiveness for our sin because God already allowed us to be able to come into the house of the Lord. He allowed us to be able to give our life wholeheartedly unto Him. Pointing out and noticing another person's sin will cause you to come under that same judgment. And God doesn't want us to judge one another. To simply trust that the Lord has forgiven that person of their fault as he has forgiven us of ours. And that he is continuing to work and allow that restoration and sanctification in their lives. Whether you can see it in the natural or the physical, God is yet still working in his own. We just have to trust and believe that God is still working in his own. Amen? Amen. We have to trust and believe that God is still working in us. But many times, like I said before, we look at that person and see them still doing that same thing time and time and time again. But God said, I'm still getting in control and I'm still working in this person that I have placed before you. This indeed will be a, what a person with a pure heart will do. They will love this person no matter their fault. They will understand that we're not perfect and things are going to happen in this life. They will see the pure heart that God sees in this person. The pure heart sees what God is doing and prays and believes that God will take their imperfection.